All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shoutcraft America. Sorry for the long-ish break. Nature called, I had to answer, otherwise nature gets very mad. Oh, well, one way or the other, we are going to be having a quick interview with two players going into this. This is the loser's match, of course. One of these guys will be eliminated from the tournament, and one of these guys will be going on to face Minigun. Puck is, of course, already through, so we'll see where this one goes. All right. Maker's camera, unfortunately, is not operating today. We're not really sure why, but... Maker, you went up against Minigun, and you had a little bit of a rough time. Do you feel that your Terran versus Zerg is stronger right now? Uh, definitely. My Terran versus Zerg is my best matchup. I don't know what happened against Minigun. I just my head was off, and I didn't play well. All right. Well, we'll see if you can do better here. So, vibe close series with your teammate going into this, and eventually Puck actually ends up advancing. How are you feeling going into this matchup with Maker here? It's angry. I angry. shouldn't have lost the puck. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like game three at all. <laughs> it kind of made me angry. And then uh, since since I lost the puck, I just started grinding ladder, and I've got 9-0 in ladder. So I'm not going to stop now. I'm going to keep winning, and I'm going to 2-0 the next two matches. Ooh, all right. Okay. That's interesting. We could start placing bets. Mike, you could start placing bets. You're really good at placing bets, aren't you? You know what, TB? Oh, wait, wait, <laughs> wait. Can you still hear me? I can hear you just fine, Okay. Mike. Okay, good. Sorry if you heard my eating noises. I, I got ravenous after losing all that money, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I want to place any more bets because <laughs> StarCraft is a pretty unpredictable game. Uh, we will see. So, Vibe going into this matchup against Maker, you are of course a match away from elimination as the WCS NA, or indeed USA 2012 champion. You feel you've got a lot on the line here? Uh, yeah, I do. I mean, uh... This definitely is like a big opportunity, and I, I was really excited that I actually made it in. You only just and, did uh, as well. There was a little story behind that. Yeah, and uh, I don't want to throw the opportunity away just by losing in the, in the well, first group stage. So. Unfortunately, you do have a guy that was pretty much sitting pretty at about rank 4 or 5 on the ladder. Maker, you are, you're a bit of a ladder monster. Why is it that you play so much ladder? Do you think that's the best way to train? Uh, well, yeah, since I don't have uh, almost any practice partners, all what can I do is ladder all day. So that's why I play a lot of games on ladder. Yeah, t tell me a little bit about Chaos Latin Gamers, actually. That is a, a clan that not many people have heard of. Yeah, it's a new clan. It's uh, from Puerto Rico. And it's still very new, but they will be adding more players. All right, well, we'll see how well they do. So, Maker, do you have any words for your opponent going into this matchup? Well, I wish him good luck because I'm going with my best. All right, Vibe, what is your response to that? Good luck. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to kill you right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how that goes. All right, guys, get to your stations. Get ready to rock and roll. I'm looking forward to seeing some great play from the both of you. And uh, Husky. All right, so going into this match right here, what do you think Maker's chances are? I, I don't think Maker really got the chance to really show us his best there. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's really, really, really hard to kind of call it right now just because, like you said, he didn't do very well in the last series. He has done well in the past. I've quite enjoyed casting his games, but overall in this series, I, I don't know if I can give this to Maker uh, but that's just based on the last two games, so I, I don't know, man. I do like, though, how, uh, how there was a lot of practice going on after the last series. Very, very upset that he ended up losing that series, and so decided, you know what? I'm going to go practice some more, get warmed up again, yeah, and uh, take, take this tournament very serious. Like, he definitely realizes the opportunity here, and uh, now now's his time to prove it. Yeah, I don't think anyone's coming into this tournament saying, oh, this is something that I don't really care all that much about. A lot of these guys have either already been knocked out of Premier League or didn't get there to begin with. So what kind of opportunities they really have? This is a big tournament for them, so I think they're all taking it pretty seriously. We'll be going into the first match. It's going to be Belshia Vestige once again. We went with a smaller map pool for this tournament. This was, of course, Jenna's decision, as it was for pretty much everything. Right, Jenna's done a great job in this tournament so far, simply because she made all of this happen and it did so pretty quickly. Right, we had to get this together relatively fast, and as a direct result, 
it was, you know, it was a little bit rushed. So she managed to get everything together. And from talking to a lot of pros, her opinion was that there's no reason to go with big map pools. Because if you have a smaller map pool, then it is much, much easier to really get properly prepared for any matchup that you're going into if you throw some weird maps in there that you don't get to really practice on the ladder then things start to just get a little bit odd all right folks maker versus vibe one of these guys will advance to play minigun in the losers finals one of these will fall out in the round of 16 who will it be we'll find out very shortly we are going into this map right now let's make it happen Alrighty, so Belshir Vestige, and uh, I must say that I quite enjoyed that uh, that little interview there between these two players, but facing elimination, I, I personally have never played in a tournament uh, of this caliber at all. I, I've, I've played secretly in some really, really small tournaments. Of course, I got crushed because I'm super bad, but there's a lot of pressure on both these players right now because this tournament, I feel like, is a, is a great way for players to make a name for themselves, like Maker, for example. Not a lot of information is known about him. He's getting some face time. Can he prove his worth here in this series? We'll find out, won't we? In the southeast position of Belshia Vestige, in the Red Trunks playing Zerg, it is Root Vibe. Versus his opponent. A man from a, a new clan, unsponsored Chaos Latin Gamers. Also known on the ladder as Hecate. In the Blue Trunks playing Terran to the northwest, it is Maker. All right, of course, it is cross spawns, as it is only a two-player map. Uh, this map can kind of be deceiving. It's it's quite large for a two-player yes. map right now. But uh, I, I I really want to know, what is Maker going to do? Is he going to try and go for the drops like we saw earlier in the series, uh, where it, it did not work out at all? It got completely no, locked down. No, it didn't. Um, does he try and go for a big macro play to try and push at around the 14 to 15 minute mark, which is a pretty solid time for Terran players to attack? I I, uh, I, I just I just I don't know, man. I, I can't say a lot based on those last ones, but Vibe, of course, a Zerg player, will most likely go Hatch First. Has his drone headed down that way. And just to explain for all the new players out there, Hatch First versus Terran is good because 9 times out of 10, or even more than that, Terran players cannot afford to scout with an SCV yet. So there's nothing to block your expansion. Exactly, yeah. Going out that early with an SCV is very, very unlikely to happen. We do sometimes see the eBay block come in, but in that case, it's it's just so hard to really pull that off. What we do have now is a gas taken here for Maker, so I don't think I've ever actually seen Maker not do that. He likes to have that option early on in the game. He still has all three in gas, so let's see what he does. I think it's going to be a Reaper opening here. There it is. Yep, there it is. Starts right out with the Reaper there. And remember, the Reaper, his job isn't to get 100 Zergling kills. It's not no. to do major economic damage. It's that he can scout like a madman. He's actually like the best early game scout in the game. And as we were mentioning before, I mean, Terran players, they really don't want to scout with SCVs unless they have to. Because Terran have the least amount of workers out of any race in the game. Zerg can make 20 drones at a time. Protoss, of course, has Chrono Boost, which just kind of leaves Terran. Of course, they have Mules, but uh, still doesn't change the fact that they're very low on workers. So, scouting with the Reaper is awesome. A second Reaper is joining in. This is where it starts right. to be a little bit more focused on uh, doing a bit of damage. Yeah, certainly. And usually you'll only go up to three. It's very, very rare that you'll see any more than that because there comes a point when more than three Reapers just isn't effective at anything. And it also makes you very, very open to just a potential counterattack. It's like, oh, you spent all your gas in Reapers? That means you have no tech behind this at all. So I can safely do something horrible to you. Now, in this case, oh, nice save there. Vibe is able to move that into the gas. So that worked out pretty well for him. Maker's already down there doing a little bit of damage. He's going to pick off a Zergling or two, perhaps. Vibe's control actually here is really 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 good he's avoided taking any losses so far but he will eventually lose that link i don't think there's really any question about that no actually not unless maker actually goes around and kills it <laughs> if he gets away without losing anything i lose the zergling yeah, i got the go. one link i gotta say though that that reaper's gotta wonder like am i actually shooting bullets because nothing is actually dying right now the queen here gonna be just in time to prevent this and remember that yes the reapers can regenerate hp when they're out yeah. of combat but it takes a lot of shots to kill off a queen uh, and, and killing a couple links here and there is fine. It's the drones he wants to oh, get. Oh, nice save. Beautiful. And, yeah, saved those several times at this point. So this... he has lost 80 resources worth of units. But other than that, a nice uh, solid hold right now. Yeah, that was really good. Like, compared to what the cost of the actual cost of the Reaper and how much it delays your tech to throw 100 gas at that, 
that was absolutely phenomenal defense there by Vibe. He doesn't. He really doesn't care. He's got four queens out right now. His creep spread hasn't really been disrupted. He saved all of his drones as well. I, all of the money he lost really was he lost one link. I think he, he didn't even lose a drone. So he lost one link. And then what ended up happening was he had to cancel a bunch of buildings. So that's where his mineral loss actually came in. So he's just cleaned the Reapers up now, and this this last one will make its way in. This might do damage, but there's another queen right there, so I don't see it doing anything. It's just going to get some scouting information, and nice juke by Maker right there. He was able to trick his opponent to think he was going one way, but it is it, that it, there's no way out for this guy. It, it's closing in. Yeah, he's he's gonna. I think he's gonna die here. Ah, and there he goes. Down he goes, crippling it to a small little heap of nothing on the floor. And immediately after that, vibe goes straight into lair. And he, currently, he is on two gas. He's creating the evolution wall off, but he's only using one evo chamber, and he's going to roach woman. Yeah, Roach is always good for uh, defensive capabilities. He can also put on some pressure on this map. It is not likely. However. We are seeing a third command center here at a maker, and uh, that does mean that the roaches might be a viable option, because right now we see Hellion and uh, Stim on the way. So not a whole lot up here to stop roaches. Probably won't see it, but uh, maker just has to keep in mind that there is a potential threat of that. He doesn't have very good anti-roach capabilities right now. No, no, he really, really does not, honestly. If he decides to go all the way up to Starport Tech, for instance, that could be really problematic. He does still only have one barracks as well. So he's going to swap this out. He's going to build another reactor. It looks like he's probably going to use this factory just to build reactor barracks and the starport rather than actually making use of Widow Mines. And he's definitely not going for that Hellion style that we saw previously from him. But in the meantime, we're going to see Speed Roach build here from Vibe. And this could work out pretty well. Hellions are on the map now that he's built like, a, a, like six of them. He's cool with not really building any more. But this wall off is going to work pretty well. The, the third might maybe end up getting cancelled here, but I think once the roaches come out, that's actually not going to be a problem at all. I don't think the Hellions do enough DPS. No, they don't. They don't do enough damage to actually make this work. It would take a lot of Hellions to, uh, to DPS down a hatchery that's still building. Um, yep. One thing the Hellions did do, though, is spot the roaches. He spotted the jiggling buildings there at the entrance, so he knows what upgrades are on the way. Yep, um, for did. the most part, he, he has a general idea of what the upgrades are going to be anyways. But uh, more roaches are on the way. Seven being produced. The Gleal Reconstitution is on the way. And as I was saying, TB, he doesn't have a whole lot of anti-roach. Now, thankfully, he does have this wall in now. More bunkers going to be established right here. But uh, again... Hellion's not what you want right now, uh, and all, he, he started a Marauder cool. yeah. um, just now, but he definitely needs to mass repair this because this is a lot of roaches headed his I way. I don't even think you can mass repair that. Like, I think there's just there's so much DPS that I feel that, that it, you basically end up out DPSing the repairs, and that's assuming that you get the SCVs there quick enough to begin with. I, I don't think Vibe realizes just how little Maker actually has at this stage. Uh, it seems like there's going to be an attempted Hellion run by just to pull this back, and it actually works. You know, this is all Maker could really do to stop that bust at the front, is just pull them back, use the Hellions, threaten with the Hellions, and say, Oi, I'm going to hit you, but... Well, I Vibe think Vibe may have out. lost his chance. He is going to go for it. For some reason, lowers the front door. I don't know that what the good. point of that is. And that means the roaches now get a complete surround on this. Although, keep in mind that SCVs can easily outpair roaches, but there's a lot of roaches right wow. now. The Marauder gets taken out, and all of a sudden, Vibe just gets an easy waltz right in the main base. Uh, one Widow Mine is here, but guess what? He's already got an Overseer. This is horrible, I, man. I, I think that was just a, a big mistake. I, I don't know how else to say that. Uh, well, Maker, Maker can hold this? But only if he, he's going to have to sacrifice his natural to do it, yeah? Which maybe you can do on three CCs without worrying too much. But he's going to need... He's got a Widow Mine in position, which is good. And it doesn't actually get the hit. Wow, Vibe responded so fast to that. The Widow Mine didn't even trigger. It takes one and a half seconds to trigger. That didn't even happen. So he's going to lose a lot. Like, he has so far... He's kind of sacrificed his natural. And his opponent is way ahead of him in almost every possible respect. If we see enough units come out, which I mean, Maker is sitting on what? On six barracks? Or that? Yeah, six barracks. And he's also building Widow Mines. He, he can push this back, but to what end? Like, because Vibe is now building Infestors and is transitioning through to a Roach Infestor style and is unharassed right now. Yeah, nothing worse than an unharassed Zerg. And also, I like what, uh, I like what Puck, or excuse me, Vibe is doing here in that he's got down. Spine crawlers and spores is third base, so he is yeah. not getting cocky at all. He is playing it very, very safe right now. His creep spread's actually ridiculous. He just planted down ten more creep tumors. He's already in the center of the map right now. Um, the scan right there to clean out the roach, but you know we mentioned all that production capabilities of Maker. 
he doesn't have the income to be able to produce off of it no. just yet. So, you know, maybe he can make up enough workers to recover here, but it, it's going to be so tough for him right now because this is the point in the game when you want to be doing like three drops at a time, and that is nowhere in the near future. You want to see how cool that was? Vibe used a changeling to trigger a widow mine, then sent a second roach to trigger the other one. So he now knows that there's no widow mines available here. He should be able to push over. I think he might be able to win right now. He's building nothing but units. He's building a hydrogen going up to that. And he is borrowing infestors. His uh, maker's not going to realize this. This is going to go through all the way uh, to the main base. I thought he'd spotted it there for a second. I'm like, well, hang on a second. He can't shoot that. That's ridiculous. But these infestors have made their way into the main now, completely uncontested. And suddenly, while I ha maker's thinking, oh, it's cool. It's totally cool. Don't worry. Ah, my mineral line is covered in infested Terrans, and I have no way to answer that. So many infested Terrans. That is actually absurd right now. This is not a good start to this series right now for Maker. He no, is going to be able really to catch isn't. these roaches out of position, but I mean, roaches at this point in the game are basically free. That's easy. I mean, look at the supply. We're at 14 minutes into a game. 181 supply versus a supply block Maker here, and this is just a complete smackdown right now from Vibe. It actually is. Like, this is really, really one-sided. The build that Vibe used was absolutely what I needed to do. I'm not really... Uh, I think it was like, hey, is there a shiny penny in the bush there? No, roaches, get out of that. You don't belong there. But we're now in a situation where we've, we're have we about to have good upgrades here for Vibe. He's sitting on one carapace. He's about to have two. He is going to bring Hydralisks into it as well. His infestors are still alive because there wasn't any detection there for Maker. And now a big Roach Ball comes in. And I think, you know, Maker's going enough to hold that. He does. Like, with the SCVs being pulled off the line, he's still going to lose a lot of SCVs in doing so, but he definitely has enough to push this back. But what about the next wave? Because that's going to have Hydralisks in it. And Maker's not going to have enough. Maybe he doesn't have enough, actually. Good lord, maybe he doesn't. And oh, it's going to be so close. But I, yeah, he's going to be able to drive that away. But he took so many losses in the process. Yeah, it's one of those Where if it's an equal battle, that actually means Maker's behind because he yes. can't reinforce this nearly as much. We mentioned the hydrogen, and there's going to be the That's GG. It. Was behind 100 supply, which he was also behind 100 supply at the beginning of that game. But uh, that, yeah. When you're 100 supply behind, that is not a good situation. Yeah, that was... And you got to remember that a lot of that supply wasn't even roaches anymore. It was transitioning into those hydras, as you mentioned. So pretty one-sided there. I'm kind of curious as if he meant to lower the depots. I can't imagine that he did uh, because no. those roaches just walked right in. and There's no everything. reason. So. Th that's, that's not a bait. I mean, why would you bait in twice as many roaches as you have units? The only, si the only situation where you win that fight is if you have those depots up and you're able to keep your buildings repaired. Then you can hold it. You can. I mean, with that, he had four marauders. He had two bunkers. I think, honestly, like, Maker's got some serious performance anxiety right now because he is not playing anywhere near as well as he usually plays on the ladder. And he plays against these players all the time. But Vibe is a seasoned tournament professional. And I think that's what's really showing here. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, Maker just making mistakes there that he probably doesn't make in the majority of his games. We, we mentioned that we haven't seen a whole lot of him in tournament play, so definitely would not be surprised by that. And uh, to, to be quite frank, though, I mean, that that doesn't matter. He has to pull it together. He has to figure out a way to, uh, to kind of clear his head because he has basically ran out of options right now. Yeah, he, he has, very much so. He doesn't really have a lot that he can actually do in this situation now. But he has no choice. He's got to pull something out. Does he go for a more aggressive Hellbat drop? Does he cheese? Like, one game away from elimination, going 0-4, does he cheese? Well, we'll find out very shortly, folks, here on Shoutcraft America. Don't go anywhere. This is make or break right here for Maker. Will he go out 0-4 and leave only Root standing in Group A? Or will he be able to claw this one back? Vibe looking dominant in that series so far. Akalon Wastes will be the next venue for this encounter. Yeah, I gotta say, I think uh, Maker so far showing that, uh, I mean, he's he's the weakest player right now. Is it nerves? Is he actually just getting outclassed in every way? Well, it doesn't matter if you're not winning games. So this is going to be the last chance for him. Uh, it sounds a little bit grim, but that is exactly what uh, what it is, really. I mean, he's only got one more chance right now to, uh, to prove just how good he actually is here and uh, unfortunately i mean I've, I've cast maker games in the past he's fun to watch and this isn't this isn't the maker that i'm used to
No, no, it isn't. But yeah, and that's the thing, isn't it? Nerves actually do play a role. There's no real question about that. If anyone thinks otherwise, they just don't know what they're talking about. And as a direct result, I think we're now in a situation where things are rough for Maker. They really, really are. This is not the ladder anymore. This is a tournament, and you've got to play it like a tournament. So, can he do it? Uh-oh. You see what I see? You I see do. That's, that's a really... Uh, I thought that was actually... Yeah, I mean, it could be, but that's a super early scout, actually. And it could still be a proxy play. We'll find out. I saw two SCVs going out there almost immediately. Anyway, let's introduce. So, in the blue trunks, playing Terran to the southeast, it is Chaos Latin Gamer's Maker, who is already out on the map really early with that SCV. We'll see if it was just for a really early scout or if it was for something else entirely. Versus his opponent in the red trunks. Yep, it is a proxy barracks. I expected it might be. In the red trunks, uh, playing Zerg to the northwest. Currently up one game in this best of three series. He will go on to face his teammate Minigun in the elimination match if he is not... Well, if he is able to take Maker down here. We'll find out. It is Root Vibe. All right. Well, a good call there, TB. Predicting some sort of cheese. Now, the real question is, is, is it going to be the extra cheddar -y cheese or is it going to be some mild cheese? Now, we do have the refinery on the way. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get out enough gas here to, uh, to begin making a Reaper or not. We'll just have to wait and see as he does have those SCVs inside right now. And a proxy Reaper can be quite effective at annoying a Zerg. Especially since they tend to go hatchery first, which means a delayed spawning pool. And does he decide to go for it? He has just enough gas right out of slightly it's gotta be, uh, missed really, time hasn't there. It? Yeah, yeah it, yep, there it is. I mean, it wouldn't make any sense to go proxy Marauder against Zerg because that's the weirdest thing ever. But yeah, it's a proxy Reaper. It's not as extreme a cheese. I mean, it's not like a, it's not like a two racks, right? But it does mean this Reaper will get there slightly quicker. The spawning pool only just went down, which means that honestly, there is actually nothing to defend this at all. Nothing. So you're not going to see a queen. The spawning pool is going to take another 60 seconds to finish. Uh, sorry, 40 seconds to finish. This Reaper is about to be out. It could do damage. The Overlord does spot it, so that confirms exactly what he thought here, which thankfully for him, he did spot. There is another proxy Reaper. This is where our, another proxy barracks. This is where it starts to get a oh, little man. extra cheesy as yeah. uh, he is going to go ahead and try and go for the aggression. Keep in mind, though, that if any Zerglings make it to the main base of Maker, there's really nothing there to defend it. Drones will have to be pulled here. There, there's really no other way to do this. Remember, he is going to be way ahead in workers, 17 to 14, and uh, he's not going to have any Zerglings out just yet. So I, I think that this is smart by Maker to try and throw off the groove of Vibe because we saw what happens when Vibe gets rolling, and uh, he's trying to stop that right now. Yeah, the second barracks is the really funky thing about this because I don't believe Vibe actually scouted it. No, he didn't. He doesn't know that that's there. So far, some damage has been done. Not a huge amount. We've seen a couple, it would seem like one worker kill. A couple of lanes come out, they're immediately going to die. Queen's on it. Here's the thing, though. The funky thing about this cheese is you might think, oh, well, he's fine once against Queen's out. No, he's not. Because this is double Reaper coming in at a time. That's enough to overwhelm the Queen. So if Vibe doesn't really get a sniff of what this is and doesn't produce the right units, doesn't get a spine down, then I think he's going to be in a lot of trouble. And Queens, uh, simply put, they just do not regenerate HP as quickly. No, it looks like Double Reaper over here uh, will be able to spot these drones if they move just a little bit more to the left. He is attacking the hatchery there. I think he's just waiting for more reinforcements before yes, he, he goes in. He needs to make sure to control correctly. He does. Right, now he, now he is up to four. Vibe has got to know. Uh-oh, that, that's a surprising amount of Reapers right now. That's a lot of Reapers. Yeah, he knows exactly what he's up against right now, but I don't think he's got what he needs to stop it. Uh, even even Queens? Ooh, man. Maker's control actually is really, really good wow. here. Yeah, so he, he almost lost that, but he didn't. So there's a lot of Zerglings coming out. So it's up to Maker to make a mistake here. And I don't think he's going to. There's two more Reapers on the way. So Maker is like fully... I, I'd say he's pretty much all in at this stage because he's certainly not building anything else behind it. He is still building workers because he can. But this is really nasty. There's about to be six Reapers. There will be eight soon. Without a spine crawler, I don't see how you can stop this. If you wait long enough for speed, which is just about to complete, and then you get enough links, that'll work. But the problem is those links are dying before the speed comes in. Now they yeah. come in. So he's pulling yeah, everything I mean, he can. It's done. not enough. Yeah, exactly. Speed's done, but... He lost all the Zerglings too much. So Vibe right now, you can definitely tell he's probably getting a little bit frustrated here. Uh, maybe transferring the drones to the natural, throw down a couple spines would be the best bet. But Maker actually, I believe, has a worker advantage now. He does yes, now, yeah. he does in a big way, 20 to 14. And Vibe, I mean, he's just been losing these queens. They get caught out of position. 
And Vibe having a lot of missteps here, uh, to be quite frank, because those queens, uh, he shouldn't have lost those. He, he needed to keep those alive, keep them in the back, if anything. And this is what happens when you try and play greedy and you just rely on the Zerglings and drones to deal with it. Uh, Maker does have nine, uh, almost 900 minerals here. Oh, oh guys, surround! He gets it! Oh, no! That's a disaster. Wow, great catch there by Vibe, but at what cost? It's eight yeah. drones to 22 SCVs. He did the best he could in that situation, but he is ne he is way far behind. Even if these barracks have to go all the way back, which they won't, they're going to keep making units, and then it, Maker's just going to build a bunch more stuff behind it. Maker is still far ahead, and can Vibe even afford to drone heavily right now? Maker's got to be careful not to keep losing these Reapers, though. Like, if he goes in one at a time, that's actually terrible. And if he loses the Reapers, as he just did there, great control there by Vibe, misstep by Maker, then, yes, his opponent will be allowed to drone back up again. Yeah, I'm trying to think right now. I mean, I feel like the only thing Vibe can do here is just make pure drones and hope that Maker doesn't move out. I mean, that's going to be the riskiest, but also the highest benefit to him. Yes, yeah. Um, he could also try and go for maybe a Baneling bus right now, but I mean, Maker, the the only thing is that these production facilities are pretty late because he was getting near uh, eight to 900 minerals there. But, I mean, what does Vibe do in this situation? It's definitely tough. He's deciding to go a little bit more safe in the now by making some links here to deny any more Reapers. But at some point, I, I feel like he can't win with 11 drones. So Usually it's got to no. be tough for him. Yeah, I mean, this may force you into a nasty all-in situation. Baneling Nest is now coming down, so it may just be forced to try a straight up bust, which is probably uh. not going to work. Like, there's not enough Zerglings on the map to make that work. Even if you do bust the front, then... I mean, he is made now. Nah, he's not going to even catch his opponent at a bad time because it, now all of these reactors are coming down and production is really ramping up for Maker with the other two barracks reaching home. It seems unlikely. If Vibe actually comes back from this position and successfully busts Maker and kills him, I will be incredibly impressed. Yeah, I mean, really the only thing that he can hope for is that Maker stops making supply depots, which is, of course, not going to happen. Three of them do go down right now. Um, the banelings might actually hit before the production gets fully underway. Uh, four, five banelings is all he can afford, which is enough to break the entrance here. And I think that this uh, supply block for Maker, if anything, is the worst time supply block ever. So oh, wow. we'll see. The, the command center here is going to spot it. He'll realize, yeah. oh, time to go back home. Yeah, Time if, he, raise these depots. if he'd gone out there, that could have actually been disastrous. But no, he saw it. All right, so he's going to Baneling bust the front here. And, oh, it's not even enough to kill it. He, now he manages to make his way through, but takes a couple of Hellion shots in the process. I don't see him winning this, honestly. Not with that many. There's the GG and immediately. GG. And that's 1-1. One, one, and Maker puts one on the board here. And you know what? He actually used... This is, it's interesting that he used that build because this is the exact same build that Vibe lost to Pult in the match prior to the qualification match for getting into Shoutcraft. That's... Ah. So it, it, he's weak to this cheese. You know, he hasn't figured out how, how to beat it yet. And as a direct result, Maker now has one on the board. So we will see. Final map is yeah. coming in between these two. Will we see a root player knockdown, or will Vi be able to come back? Makers put one on the board now, but you can't just keep pulling cheeses like that. You can do one, throw it into a best of three, throw your opponent off. That's a valid tactic. You do it again, chances are that the guy's going to be way better prepared for it this time around. So what else does Maker have up his sleeve? Well, we're going to find out here in the next game. I mean, we still haven't seen Maker win with a solid standard play. No, I man. really think that uh, that Puck is going to know, or excuse me, Vibe. I always switch those for some reason. But uh, I, I think he's going to realize what went wrong there. He has to focus more on defense, cannot rely just on pure zergling against something like that. If he can force it into a standard game, I think he's going to have the advantage moving forward just based on what we've seen. But hey, man, it's StarCraft, so any valid strategy that makes your opponent lose is just that, a valid strategy. So we'll see if Maker has anything else planned. We will. We'll be back after this break, folks. Don't go anywhere. All right. It comes down to this. One of these guys is going home. He's already home. It's a figure of speech. The other guy will go on to play Root Minigun to attempt to qualify for the round of eight. The money goes up at that point, man. It really, really does. Can Maker bring out something else? Because, yeah, good cheese. Well executed, good control. We need to see more than that, though. This is a best of three that generally only works once. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the only way to put it. At this point, he needs... 
to just focus. He needs to feel good about that last win, and he needs to to just play his game. Um, uh, the, the fact that he's so high ranked on ladder shows that he knows what he's doing, but uh, I don't know, man. I still want to give a slight edge to Vibe right now, just based on what we've seen, but it's still anyone's game. Yes, it is, and we are going into it right now, and it's going to be on Star Station. This will be where we find out who advances and who is going home. So, ladies and gentlemen, for potentially the final time this evening in the Red Trunks, playing Zerg to the northwest, it is Root Vibe versus his opponent to the southwest position in the Blue Trunks, playing Terran. It is, of course, KLG's Maker. Now, really, what does Vibe do this time differently? Does he scout on the map a lot more? Does he decide to keep his overlords just maybe a little bit closer? Does he still go for hatchery first? Does he go for a spawning pool a little bit earlier? I mean, I'm kind of curious to see what Vibe decides to do based on the fact that that last rush hit him so early that he was completely unprepared. And really, if you're going hatchery first, there, there's no real way to prepare for something like that. It's more about how you react. So maybe he'll just end up changing how he reacts in that case. But uh, definitely never feels good to lose to something like that. But I think Vibe knows that uh, he has a good chance with his core mechanics. Um, it's just dealing with that early game aggression that can be really tough for Zerg. Very true. Big shout out, by the way, to the Gun Run, who helped us solve our streaming issues earlier. Who discovered, in fact, that it was the Leviathan beneath the depths that was eating our bandwidth. It was not, in fact, it was no one's fault. That's the cool thing about this situation. It was actually nobody's fault. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't Twitch's fault. It wasn't Time Warner's fault. It was that damn Leviathan. So we don't get to blame yeah, anyone. Yeah, I feel like we should have sent in the hero gun run just maybe a year ago to kill off this Leviathan. He is, uh, he is very good at destroying the internet demons out there. So, of course, a big thanks to him. He, he is basically saving esports single-handedly. So he's awesome. All right. Gas has been taken once again. That is pretty much standard for Maker. But this time around, he's playing a little bit a little bit more straight up. He's going to be walling off here by the looks of it. And what does he go into from here? You know what I've actually seen a resurgence of lately, Husky? Uh, no. Banshees. Banshees, uh, Banshees, uh. Banshees. We've seen a lot of that. Some cloak play, some non-cloak play. It seems like, I guess, Zerg are expecting more kind of defensive Widowmine or a Hellbat play. So where the Banshee comes in, it gets a little bit surprising. Like... Terran right now have so many early options for harass, it's really awesome. Yeah, it's kind of a weird thing where I remember when they announced the new Heart of the Swarm units, I was like, all right, they gave Terran all new mid-game units, uh, which is kind of weird because there was already so many options for Terran, yeah. and it, it has nothing to do with balance. Like, I, I'm not going to talk about balance, but what it does mean is that, as you mentioned, they, they just added, like, all right, well, now there's Widowmind timings, there's Widowmind expansions, there's yep. Widowmind drops. Uh, and also the Hellbat as well. It, it plays such an integral role in the in the middle parts of the game. So um, that's why it's really up to Terran in PVT and in a ZBT to try and do something in the mid game. You just cannot sit back because as much as you love to do this TB, you can't just sit back and mass up carriers. It's not going to work versus the vibe. I, I would love to mass up carriers as Terran, man. I, I tell you, I will adopt that unit. You guys don't build carriers anymore. I give them to me. Give them to me, and I will build all the carriers. <laughs> that is what's going to happen. I'm so, at Valor but whatever, whatever. All right, so here, here is what we have. So we've got an expansion. That was just a Reaper expand here from Maker. He's going to go two Reapers, no higher than that. I like this. This is a much better play, in my opinion. It's not really going to do anything, but it is going to give map control for a while. It's kind of... Usually it forces speed out instead of seeing, like, one of those really nasty early timings, like, say, a big Roach play or going straight up to Lair and doing some weird funky tech stuff. So that kind of works. There's only a single gas out here for Vibe, so he's going to take enough. Is he actually going to take out of gas? He's not. That's the interesting thing. He's still mining gas. So what's he going to do with that? He's going to turn that into a Lair. Will we see a Baneling Nest or a Roach Warren go down early on? We'll find out. Banelings really not used that much in the early game. Of course, they're still no. a very good unit in the mid game when there's a lot of Marines on the field. But yeah. it's so tough for Zerg to pull off any sort of timing with that. Uh, but maybe he'll like reverse metagame him and be like, well, no, actually, I can make this work because you're not expecting it. But we do have three barracks now down and the Hellion production two at a time, which is completely standard here. This has been standard in Wings of Liberty and the Heart of the Swarm for a very long time. It's just nice for some map control. Get a little scouting in. You can sometimes try and get a run by, but players have since kind of uh, gone away from run bys because it was just a little bit too risky. Um, once, once Zerg players realize that, you know, a little bit of micro will help you against that. 
Well, Mega's playing straight up standard right now. We The gas for Vibe, I, I guess, is just going to be for plus one and then a lair, I would think. He's going to... He decided against building double Evo chambers. He's going Carapace upgrade. I like this a lot. If you're going to play a lot of Link style stuff, or even if you're going to play Roaches in the early game against Terran, having that plus one Carapace is great. It's especially good against both Hellions and against marines because your lings don't die anywhere near as fast so that's really nice to see still hasn't gone lair yet he has taken his third base down to the bottom here and he's now got that hundred gas let's see if he decides to go lair off of that eventually he's gonna have to he's going another upgrade interesting we may see the the ling bane ling possibly muta style into ultras in the late game here coming from vibe we did see an overlord there actually get a, uh, a huge scout off as well. Spotted everything except for that starport, which is just now going to be constructed there. So he knows the ratio of three barracks to one factory. So as long as he keeps tabs on where that army is, and the fact of the matter is this army is actually starting to look a little scary. A lot of Hellions mixed in, which is a couple of Reapers. That it is a bad day to be Zerglings. But uh, we'll see if he has enough here to save this expansion. 24 Zerglings on the way. But those upgrades nowhere near completed, no. so I worry that a lot of micro on this uh, army could do some damage. But he actually decides to retreat for now. I think if he overextends here, then he gets surrounded and killed, maybe. Because I think there are just enough links to get a good surround on creep, and the creep spread's not too bad at the front. So he... I think... You also got to bear in mind that Maker made some huge mistakes in game one when it came to his defense, so I think he might be feeling just a little bit gun shy, which is an unfortunate position to be in. Let's see if Maker can actually kill these lings. Yes, he can. He's in a good position. There's no way he can be surrounded there, so that's good. Baneling Nest is coming down, though, so we will see. I mean, well, I, 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 let's see if we if we see two more gas. He's currently on three. If we see a fourth gas, then this is clearly Mutaling Baneling being played. Third base is now done. Zerglings there still trying to uh, get a good surround on those units, being very active with those. Uh, he does have to... Oh, might actually kill off a Reaper right here. And... Oh, oh Eventually. Okay, that was kind of awkward. Nope, no, and, nope the, Reaper, the Reaper gets a Let second chance at life. But uh, right now, does Maker decide to go for a third base, or is he just going to be kind of a, a very aggressive stance here? He has Widow Mines on the way, Combat Shields, and Marines. So, I mean, all signs are pointing push. to aggression. Those Queens are out of position, too. Got to oh. lose those almost immediately. Yeah, one down. Second one's going down as well. This is a great strike in the third base right here by Maker. This is looking really, really good. He's got Medivacs as well. Oh, he finds the Banelings just before they morph in. The Lynx come in. Will he be able to get away? And it connects oh. to the... Uh, he lost a lot there, but he didn't lose everything. And now he's moving into the base. And that was like pretty much everything Vibe had to defend against this. He's now in a good spot to try and defend it with as much damage as possible. He's moving into the base right now. Another Queen's going to die here. Uh, this is actually looking really, really bad for Vibe. The timing of this from Maker, it absolutely was, astounding. It was really nice. He's overstimming, um, I think, though. I think he's going to lose yeah. these now. He wants to take out another queen, but I think I feel he did overstim. He didn't take another queen down there, and I think he got a bit too impetuous. It was a good attack. Don't get me wrong. It was a good attack. But now I think Vibe's in a situation where he's going to be thinking to himself, okay, do I... I just had to spend a lot of gas getting Banelings up, and I just started my upgrades as well. Do I want to get a Spire, or do I want to play Ling Baneling until I go higher than that? And that's like just playing Ling Baneling without the ability to strike at your opponent's production with Mutalisks or pick off drops is incredibly difficult. Not ideal by any means. Can no. he actually secure a fourth base here? Uh, it's going to be tough. The third is on the way for Maker. I will say that Maker's third was a little bit later. I think he should have uh, dropped it down right when he was moving out, but... Uh, he did take some big hits on the Banelings overall, though he has been cost-effective. The Widowmines are here. They could do lots of friendly fire, though. I think that's exactly what Vibe was trying to activate right yeah. there. It's not going to happen. Might lose another queen, and I mean, careful. at the end of the day, ah, Ooh. the Widowmines taking out the Banelings. You have to be so careful. And Vibe, I mean, simply put, he cannot afford to lose his base. Uh, because it, he would be on two bases, and that that is not acceptable in the How is he going to stop it, though? I mean, oh, he's moving in there. That's going to actually twig trigger a Widow Mine to kill off a lot of those. That was a great, it was a great time to attack there, but it wasn't quite enough. And this drone line is going to go down. Vibe is taking so much damage here. He's trying to get Baneling Speed and plus two up. If he gets plus two, he'll be in a great spot because he's going to have plus two Carapace against zero, zero Marines. Th these links just aren't going to die. But he's got to live that long. I mean, Maker now has a third command center, and there are no Mutalisks. There's no... There's no chance of Spire. And I think Vibe just actually has to go all the way through to Ultras here. He has to just try somehow to live that long. Because you've usually got to supplement those Lings with something, right? Or maybe you get Infestors out. Maybe you do that. I mean, he's on six gas. Maybe he goes Infestor. But right now, he's just trying to hold on. 
the, the, the upgrade advantage is going to buy him the time he needs, at least for now. Drop over here will get locked down. Not killed off, but definitely preventing it from doing any sort of damage. Yep. And this is some uh, some must-defend type situation right now. Vibe does decide to throw down a Spire here. Is killing off yet another Marine. He's trying to just leave his Lings everywhere that he can. Banelings will be finishing up right now. Maker just now securing that third base. So again, between his multitasking, he's not able to get that expansion up as soon as he would possibly like to. But still, with no hentai air, this is just so awkward to try and defend yeah. uh, those drops. Yeah, getting the spiral ups are a good thing. Now he has speed banelings. If it's just marine drops and not marauders, then he should be able to take this out quite nicely. So things are looking all right for Vibe. Things are looking up, but he is still behind economically. He lost a lot of drones, and his opponent's third is up now as well, and is now transferring workers to it. So he's going into a mid-game play. He is also going burrow, so we're going to be seeing some baneling landmines by the looks of it, which I'm looking forward to. The, the Spire play means that he's going to, for the mid-game, play Mutaling Baneling, right? So we're not seeing Infestors yet. We're seeing no, no sign of going to Hive or anything like that either. Big Scan comes down and sees the composition, which is really, really nice to, for Maker to get there. But now Maker has to deal with the fact he's going to be harassed, and he's going to be harassed a lot. There's going to be 10 Mutalisks popping out pretty soon. And then they're going to be able to get in there. The Widow Mines primarily are at the front to defend the third and not at the rear to defend a Mutalisk backstab into the main. I think Vibe right now actually needs to throw away some of these links. He's got to be supply blocked as soon as the Spire's done. Uh, yep, there it is right there. Well, Can there's only make a five And That's he's got to try and too. do just that. Oh, and wow. those SCVs, what are they doing? Completely bunched up there. And I'm surprised he actually made it in here. Maker may just be throwing away this lead. He's got a nice engagement over here on the left side. And that's just freeing up supply for more Mutalisks right now. Ah, he lost the Overlord there, so he's supply blocked again. But uh, the Overlord's going to be finishing up just right now. He's got a lot of money to invest. There are 14 Mutalisks on the way. And he actually is still at this natural. All of a sudden, it. Maker in a great spot and then fumbles a couple things. And if he does not deal with these Mutas effectively, I mean, all of a sudden, Vibe is in this. There is a nice supply lead, though, for Maker. Yeah, it's like, what does Maker do? Does he go to a base trade? Does he try and just deny the third base, try and kill it? Because he's got the army to do that right now. He's also on 1-1, which means that things have evened up a little bit. Vibe still has an upgrade lead, though. It's 1-1 versus 2-2. It's not as bad as the 2-0 situation we were in earlier, but I don't know, even with a larger supply count and with a larger army, he's still up against a lot of Banelings, and there's a lot of Marines in this composition. So these Banelings could easily destroy his opponent. And now with the Mutalisks there, he's going to be pulled all over the place. Yeah, and of course, the, the Marines in a straight-on battle will just destroy these Mutas. Of but course. the chance of Vibe giving him that opportunity is uh, quite slim. The main base is completely undefeated. He did not realize the Mutalisk tech switch was actually a viable option right now. And you can see he is going to sack his main. It just sends out his entire army. He's going to press his uh, supply advantage by trying to pull those Mutas away. And if oh, on, the mines are down. This is going to be a huge explosion one way or the other. A lot of Banelings died there. Oh, it's huge. The mines maybe make him actually could make this happen now. The mines connected so well. Oh, Baneling Landmine connects. Nicely done there by Vibe. Vibe's still in it right now, trying to hold on to this. If he kills this army, then Maker is out of it as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, Maker able to get some good control there right when he needed it, but it was a little bit after uh, being able to save the majority of his army. So yes, he killed off one base. These Mutas, though, got to kill off almost every single SCB at this natural. That is absolutely huge. So I think that even though he's only on two bases right now, Vibe's going to stay toe-to-toe -to -toe with the income, but this is going to be a dicey moment for both players here. The Medivac's running dangerously low on energy, oh. but the army just has such high DPS inside the main base. The Mutalists here are going to kill off more and more SCBs, trying to kill that bunker. He does get it at the entrance. And the Mutalist count, though, it's slowly dwindling. He can barely get, uh, kill off these uh, Marines here. There is enough now in the main base to defend the Mutas. Is there enough to defend Maker? Oh, man. This is getting crazy right now. So there's a couple of Mutas still remaining. There's only five. Like, if he gets a turret down here, he can throw that back. There's another six Mutalists on the way. The third base for Vibe went down. So Maker actually has a base advantage, which is never where you want to be as a Zerg player. He did lose a lot of SCVs, but he makes up for that in Mules, right? So that's okay. This force is going to be killed. I mean, there's no question about that. It's, it's way, way too low on health. So that was actually a lot of Maker's army that just died there. He is going to try and boost away, but I think he might still lose these. He has no means to stop them from being shot down, which is a pretty big deal here as well. Fourth base now being taken by Vibe. And army supply-wise, you still have a lead for Maker. And, oh, he's going he's to try and catch him in a Hive transition here. He's trying to get up to Hive so he can get his Ultras on the way. 
But if this army gets together and is able to do damage and doesn't get hit by Banelings, of which there are 24 on the map here, Maker can still win this. This is a crazy game. Vibe is way down in supply now. Maker definitely in a really good spot here because that third base getting taken out, it is not re-established. Maker just uh, still has his natural and his third. So unless these Banelings get some crazy connects, they're going to be his last ditch effort here. So far, that wasn't good. not what he needs. Not He's going to back this army into a corner. There's only a couple Banelings remaining, though. Here come the reinforcements. I don't think it's going to be enough, though, to kill this army. Not quite. And not a whole lot left, but those mines, Vibe has no way of dealing with this right now. No, he doesn't. The mines are going to be off cooldown in a second as well here. So Vibe... Mm, actually, there should be enough mules to clean this. Oh, he just stimmed at the wrong time. He ate a mine. That's not so good. But those stimmers are actually reducing this down significantly. There's only five marines in that comp. And, oh, nice. Use the overseer to trigger both mines. He can kill this now with mutas. Vibe's still in this. Yeah, he's got to be super careful of those mines. The one in the back is still ready to go. Another Overseer is going to be on the way. Banelings morphing in as well. He is behind in supply. That's going to be the major uh, problem for him. And there's the reinforcements moving out across the map as Maker uh, is looking to gear up to try and end this right now. The Widow Mines, do they do any splash damage? Not nope. today. Not his lucky day at all as Maker. Uh, so far, I, I don't know where this control is coming out of, but it is what he needs, well. and he needs to keep doing it right now. Burrows Widow Mines a little bit aggressively. And he is going to be okay here. Scans there to take out the creep. And the third base is mining for Vibe right now. But I... God, it's so tense right now. He's very, oh, he's very low on supply, though. Well, he got the connection. It's pretty good. But I think the rest of the Banelings are going to get picked off here. And that's not good at all. Another Baneling crashes in. He is holding on for dear life right now. He is holding on. If he can hold this fourth base... If he can make sure his natural doesn't die, maybe he can do this. But it's so close. And honestly, I think Maker has such a lead right now. It's going to be incredibly difficult to pull this off. Drones are off the line right now. Mutalist now being brought into position to try and finish this off. And he's doing a good job of killing off the Marines. But there are a lot of medivacs that are keeping them alive right here. And the reinforcements are here. And even if he Widow kills mine. this wave, look Second at the reinforcements. Widow mine. Widow mine's lots of splash damage to both sides. Oh, but that's going to be favoring Maker right Vibe's now. Going out. It does look like Vibe got to get taken out. So many reinforcements on the way. And there's no way that it's Vibe too can too much. GG. The GG. GG. And there it is. Maker manages to claw it back and show a stellar performance in Game 3 there against Vibe. And Vibe is now out of the tournament. That's the first player eliminated immediately. And Maker is able to make that work. And... Uh, you can say all you want about the cheese in game one, but that game, you know, in game two, but game three, he played brilliantly. He really did. He did exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. And I think the, the, the nonstop aggression was really what kind of tied it all together because it was a situation where the Mutalist tech switch was ransacking his base. The, the main mineral line was destroyed. The natural lost the majority of the workers there. Um, just looking at the uh, the workers active, you can see kind of where it started to dip down. Uh, but he just actually, I guess it didn't even dip down as much as I thought it did as uh, he left his main base completely undefended. And it's one of those things where you have to choose be aggressive and try and end it or stay back and defend. And I think he did the right calculation in that, you know, Maker realized, hey, I have a larger army than my opponent. So if I'm putting on the and aggression, spend it. Yeah. Yeah, and those mutas aren't going to be doing as much damage as Marine and Marauder. So, a great choice there. Ended up paying off, obviously, and Maker was one game away from being eliminated and uh, brings it back, and now he is two games away from being eliminated yeah. as uh, he still <laughs> has one more chance. God, that's depressing, isn't it? He's, yeah, he earns the right to be eliminated again. I was, uh, <laughs> but we will see. So, Maker did a good job. He knocks out one root player. Vibe is out of the tournament. Now he must go up against Minigun. Can Maker upset two of the strongest players on route to qualify alongside Puck? That would be a big deal to a lot of people. I think that would be considered an upset by most. I'm going to have to agree, especially after the first games. Um, maybe, maybe though, he's just like one of those players who doesn't do well until he has to, until it's down to the very last game, because he is two games away from being able to, uh, to advance. So... Got to hand it to a man. He pulled it out when he needed it. In and it has style, since. Man. Yep. And. Ooh. I, I don't even know what to expect of the next game. I still want to. I, I think Minigun has got this. But. I don't know. I feel like Maker, like on one hand, he played at a super low level. And then in this game, he played at like a very high level. So who, who knows what's going to happen? It's a mystery, man. Maker, to me, is such an unknown quantity right now. And to be honest. Mini, I mean, Minigun is as really, really good in this matchup. There's no question about that. Is he good enough? Hmm. Good question. Bear in mind, of course, that Minigun... This is a rematch. Minigun did take out Maker 
like, completely obliterated him in the first two matches. And that's something you really need to consider. I think Maker's found his groove now, but I don't think that's going to be enough. If you look at the performance in the first set, how can you say that Maker is in is not the underdog, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, Minigun able to show us some really, really good games so far as well. So that's, uh, that's going to be coming up in just a moment. All right, folks, we're going to be going into the last game of the evening. It will be for a qualification spot. Minigun and Maker in a rematch coming in right here. Will Maker be able to do better than he did in the first series? Because Minigun took him apart there. Let's see what he manages to pull off. We'll find out after this break, folks. You're watching Shoutcraft America. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 